Hey, so are you doing a personal build upgrade anytime soon? Okay, all right. But first, a message from our sponsor. The Z9 Neo by Zalman brings all the right features on a budget. With a large windowed side panel, five included fans, and an excellent interior layout with super simple cable management. Get it now, link in the description below. Wow, so today marks the day when I completely move away from spinning hard disks inside my main workstation PC and replace all the drives with solid state drives. Woo! Those early days when you're trying to edit something and the disk just keeps spinning and spinning and things just keep loading and loading. So when I first built the Skylake editing PC, I had this point in time imagined. I was really looking forward to it. With the VX500 new drives from OCZ Toshiba, they're really changing the game on what you would consider to be sort of these mainstream SSDs to be super compatible and actually quite preferred uh, to be used inside a workstation PC. And that's because of their crazy high NAND endurance. So let's take the one terabyte variant of the VX500. This drive has has a NAND endurance of 592 terabytes. That means that you could be writing to this drive 10 terabytes per month for five years, which is its warranty period. And that places it way above many consumer drives, which is why I'm placing this in this workstation status. Price-wise, we're looking at $150 to $330 for the 512 and one terabyte respectively. Uh, that's a pretty good deal for something that will last you for a very, 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 very long time. The new drives also look quite unique with this silver dotted uh, texture on the surface, squared edges, very low profile, can fit in notebooks no problem with just a simple sticker, blue sticker on the front and the specification one at the back. The NAND is not 3D, it's 2D NAND, it's 15 nanometers and the controller here, we actually don't know much about the controller but it seems to prioritize a lot on the stability on the long term versus short term performance gains in synthetic benchmarks. So let's populate these guys in and do some tests. All right, so now that's done. I've set my one terabyte SSD uh, to be my primary video projects drive. And since we've got a 16 terabyte Synology NAS, I can offload all my archive to there and my dream machine is complete. Man, what is wrong with your hair? Now here's an interesting tidbit about my previous primary main workstation SSD. This is where all the files are dumped to. This is where all the basic work is happening. And from there, the footage and all the files are being moved into the archive. So in the 12 months that I've been using this nonstop, it only has 2.7 terabytes of NAND write operations. And that's pretty crazy to think it's quite low. It's only 3% of its lifespan uh, for NAND write operations for the Vector 180 in the 12 months. That's, that's pretty good. The VX500 drives are actually quite fast. They're a little bit slower than my Vector 180s in write operations and synthetic benchmarks, but maintain, look at that, consistent speed for copy operations, which is very important. I use this on a daily basis while copying from the disk to my Intel 750, perform exactly the same on both SSDs. So the Vector 180 was just as fast as the VX500. So what I'm trying to get out of the VX500 as my primary workstation video drive is consistency and that is exactly what we see. And so my system right now has six drives in total, uh, one NVMe and five SATA SSDs. And because of this population, I've discovered a bottleneck. That's right. Who knew? So two of the six SATA connections on this motherboard are limited by bandwidth. So there's not enough PCIe lanes on the Z170 chipset to support all SATA SSDs to be running at their full potential. A little bit disappointing, but quite eye-opening of what could be done to mitigate this uh, bottleneck. This is where an X99 system would swoop in, kick out that bottleneck out of the house, but 
that made me realize there is a compromise. I have tested the 6800K versus the 6700K to realize the four core machine was faster in After Effects, primarily due to higher clock frequency, but still it's quite eye-opening to realize that there is almost this compromise on both sides. But the beauty of PC hardware is of course migration of hardware and I'm happy that I've settled on a fully SSD only run workstation and that makes uh, me wait for loading no more and that's a pretty good day. You know what else is pretty good? A message from our sponsor. Assembling your VertiGear gaming chair just got a whole lot easier with a simple insert mechanism of the back seat onto the side rails so you mount the side screws much faster. A true one-man job. Assembly made easy by VertiGear. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. All the relevant videos and links will be in the description below, uh, including my raid failure, uh, which is why I am not raiding in this system. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Dimitri with Hyrule Connects. We'll see you in the next video.